Hi, this is Coffee Talk Tuesday, and I am here with Brittany and Teddy and Jasper. And we are talking about um, the CHD awareness. It's CHD Awareness Week, and so I they happen to be in town for some tests and all the stuff. I'm going to let her tell the story and everything. Um, but we thought we would snag a coffee talk with them because he's just so cute. Are you going to smile for me? Can you, you say hi, smile? Jasper? <laughs> yeah. All I right. So go ahead and tell me your tell me your story. What? Okay. So this is Jasper. He is now 14 months. Um, when Jasper was an infant, he was three months. I knew that something was wrong. Um, his just be, his behavior changed. His appetite changed. And I kept taking him to the doctors, making phone calls to them, brought him to the emergency room, um, asking the doctors, please help me, something's wrong with him. Yeah. Um, and each time I brought him in, the doctors only looked at his vitals, and Jasper's always been a happy, healthy baby boy. Um, so they saw how happy he was, and despite his vitals being a little off, they just left it at that. And they said, he's growing. That's all it is. Um, I refused to leave the doctor's office one day, and I asked her to run tests for the flu, do x-rays, do anything you can, and find out what's wrong with my baby. The doctor said that, came back with x-rays, and she said, I don't know what I'm looking at. And she was our pediatrician cardiologist. Wow. She said, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm going to send it to my colleagues to find out what it is. I can send you home, or you can stay here. And I begged the doctor, just keep us here, admit us, something bad's going to happen tonight. And I won't be able to get back to the hospital in time. I know something bad is happening tonight. Within a few hours, Jasper coded. They called Life Flight, and... I went out from the ICU room into the main waiting area right before he coded and I could see the tears in the eyes of the doctor and nurses and I knew something was wrong. And they told me that Jasper's heart is too big. It was so big instead of being the size of his fist, like a normal baby heart, it stretched almost from ribcage to ribcage. Oh my gosh. That's why he had been sick. His heart was failing. Um, he was dying. He coded as Life Flight got there. Primary Children's Life Flight, his name is Ryan. He saved my baby numerous times. Ryan brought Jasper back. He stabilized him so that he could endure the flight over. Our hospital anesthesiologists and doctors did not know how to place IVs or breathing tubes into Jasper. Ryan did all of that. Um, once we landed, Jasper's heart rate was over 300 beats per minute. I don't know what happened that day. Some, something big. Because Ryan was able to get his heart to go back to a normal rhythm. Um... I talked with Ryan afterwards, and months after actually, and Ryan told me that when he left that shift after Jasper was stabilized, that he was whiter than Jasper was that night because he said, I don't know how that happened. That shouldn't have happened like that. Jasper should not be here. Um, and talking with the doctors, we have no idea how Jasper made it through that. But he did. Special little guy. Yeah. So we oh. waited at primaries for several months. Um, he was hooked up to the Berlin Heart left ventriculosis device to help his heart pump regularly while we waited for our heart transplant. We received our heart on July 31st after a special nurse named Brittany came in and told me I had a dream. I had a dream that all three babies that are waiting for their heart transplants will get their heart transplants before the end of July. Oh, wow. <laughs> July 31st, we got oh the phone Oh, my gosh, that's 
so crazy. <laughs> and at that time, all three of the babies that were waiting got their heart transplants. Oh my gosh. Um, I do believe that there is a higher power and that there has definitely been someone with Jasper all the way. That's the only way I can explain how he's here, how he's functioning mm -hmm. as well as he can. Um, he's had two strokes, so he's not able to swallow normally. So we have to do the feeding tube. Um, the right side of his brain has been so damaged that it does not function. There's no blood flow there anymore. But he kicks with his left leg and he uses his left arm just like a normal baby. Oh, that's so great. Well, we love you, Jasper, and you are a special little boy. Hey. Hey, hi. Can you smile? You are smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, so what do you have to, what do you want to say to like create awareness? What, what should, what can we do as a, a society or a people or, or my nonprofit even with rainy days? Like what can we do to continue to create awareness and not, I mean, cause if you went back to the, the doctor so many times, they didn't even think to look they didn't. At, at that. So I mean, besides trusting your mother's instinct and saying something right. is wrong, if, if it wasn't for that, then it probably would have been the other way, right? If you didn't, like, Absolutely. no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the one thing I would say is that as a parent, listen to your gut instincts, no matter what the doctors tell you. Um, if you feel something's wrong, Yes, it's going to be expensive and a pain with insurance, but push them, tell them. I had to tell her, I don't care what it costs me. Do x-rays, do blood work, find me an answer. I know something's wrong. Um, and if I wouldn't have pushed her to do that, we wouldn't have known. Wow. Um, and I, I think the other thing too <laughs> that's really important is as soon as your kids are old enough to get vaccines or flu shots get them done they don't know what caused Jasper's heart problem but they think uh -uh. it was some sort of virus uh -uh. Oh. Um, but by the time someone listened to me the virus was out of his system and had done the damage to his heart um, so just watch your kids be very in tune with them as much as you can trust your gut instinct and Another part about heart transplants is our journey is far from over. A heart transplant does not last a lifetime. So he will be going through this again. Um, Jasper will have to have another heart transplant eventually. We pray that he can get as many years as he can with this heart. Um, for organizations such as Rainy Days, you know, I, I met Shalise because she had this wonderful idea. <laughs> um, let's get our real superheroes out there. So she had a superhero photo shoot set up. Jasper had not been able to interact with people or other kids his age because he was on so many restrictions after the heart transplant. And that day Jasper got to play he got to dress up as a superhero. He got to sit with Batman and fly with him. <laughs> um, and it may not seem like a lot, but those little things, especially when, you know, you're stuck in an isolation room for health reasons, those tiny little things, those little gestures, even those hellos or, you know, stopping, give you a little candy bar or something just to know that they're are people who still remember that you're there. They know that you can't come out very much, but they're there for you. I mean, that meant all the world to us. It really did. Um, and when he gets older, those are pictures that I can show him. Yeah. Um, oh, that makes me so happy. It meant the world to us. And you are our favorite one. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to meet you guys, and you can you can come in our video too, Teddy. You're you got you've been through a lot too, <laughs> as dad, dad and moms. They go through. You guys, I can't even imagine 
every day. Like this just takes over your whole life and not to even mention the, the fear. I know you're willing to do whatever it takes for your, for your baby and to keep him going. And, you know, but it's it gotta be exhausting. You know, my husband said the other day, having a high medical needs child is like having three kids at once. Um, and it really is because every second of the day you have to watch him for signs of rejection, signs of getting sick. You have to watch, um, does he feel puffy? Is he retaining liquid? It's, you have to, you learn how to be a nurse on your own. Um, and when you're not doing that, when he's sleeping, you're fighting with the insurance companies or the home health care mm. companies. <laughs> um, but, you yeah. know, for people to stop and say, hi, hey, we're still thinking of you. That's the biggest thing in the world. Well, I love that you, you do, you live in Montana, so yes. you have to come down here, we're saying every six weeks, Yes, which is, I mean, you know, road trips are fun. <laughs> yeah, road trips are a lot of fun with the baby. <laughs> well, um, I, I hope that you guys are in town. We're actually doing another superhero party, Primary Children's is letting us do it in the Ronald McDonald That's playroom. That's wonderful. Uh, we can't do it till June because RSV season needs to be completely over. Right. But it, and there's a lot of red tape. But hopefully, I mean, even though I know it's pain coming down here. but We'll be down we'll, here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be here so you can we'll come schedule again. schedule around so, it. That's right. <laughs> so that's super awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your story. And I know that it's sometimes probably hard to talk about, but at the same time, it's, you know, you guys are amazing. And, and I... I wanted anything that I can do, rainy days can do, anyone else that, that, you know, I can get to help out with these little things is, it's my honor and my, my privilege and I'm here for you. So. Thank you. You've been wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Give me a hug. You're amazing. Oh, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any other questions, please go ahead and message me or, um, you know, I'll, I'll let you know what you can do to help us out. So thank you so much and we'll see you next week.